as the acting chair of the Conway Select Board, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, this is the Monday, June 17th meeting of the Conway Select Board. There's a joint meeting with Capital and Finance Committee at 6.30. Um, it's being recorded on FCAT. It's also available on Zoom. And if the Zoom fails for any reason, which it has in the past, this meeting will still proceed. Um, all right, first item on the agenda is vote to approve the minutes of June 3rd, 2024. I looked them over. They're good as always. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, warrants. We have accounts payable warrants in the amount of $81,330.70. Payroll warrant in the amount of $148,376.50. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $34,000. $874.96, and I looked those over, they were pretty boring. So, uh, move to approve the warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Um, we went to North Poland Road yes. with that resource to discuss the uh, solar array problems that have been uh, going on there. I uh, met with the, um, the neighbors that are within the vicinity of the array. Got a lot of great information. There's still additional um, communication that needs to be had between us and Eversource. But uh, it, I thought it was a good meeting and um, we at least see that there's some focus from Eversource on helping resolve the issue. Yeah, I was really pleased by their response. I wish that was Thursday. I might, that feels like it was two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's still not up and running, though, right? They shut it off? Well, well we, we don't know don't yet. No. And, and they weren't. They don't know if they can tell us or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> the neighbors believe that it's up and running, but we don't actually have any confirmation of that. So. But did you hear buzzing? Well, that was the main topic was the feedback. And there's some theories about how that the feedback might, the residents, uh, could be happening, but um, uh, it's on Eversource now to kind of investigate right. and figure out the cause, mm -hmm. or at least find the break point of where the cause is happening, because if it's with the solar array, then it's up to them yeah. to, to come up with the resolution. Okay. But they seem pretty responsive to the two Eversource engineers, representatives they sent out. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I think that's it for me. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, public comments? Um, here for public comments? I don't believe so. No unfinished business. So new business. Um, pending our last election, we have a new member of the select board, Elaine Campbell. I'm currently the chair because I was the deputy chair prior to um, this last election. Um, but now it's time to elect a new chair. <laughs> and I would like to nominate um, Chris Baldo as chair of the select board. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> well earned. Take it away. <laughs> All right. Um, we're do we doomed. also, so we, were, we have to elect a, a <laughs> chair. Oh, 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 you're done. Oh, yeah. Yes. You can take over. That's his yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, Do you want to remain deputy. deputy given this is Elaine's I'm, first year? I'm happy to remain deputy chair. Okay, so I'll make a motion to vote uh, Erica Goldman as the deputy chair of the select board. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Which means that Elaine probably has to be clerk. <laughs> is that what, what the term is? There's, um, isn't there? I don't think, no. no. I think we've only had the, the chair and the vice or deputy chair. Okay. Because, you know, <laughs> I know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, well, one of the first things I wanted to do since um, we have a new member is open the table to you to either discuss, um, uh, you know, what you love about Conway, what you'd like to see this board do, what your ideas are, or if you don't want to say anything. <laughs> uh, well, I did meet with our town administrator uh, and got briefed on some things that are, are up and coming or going on. Um, so that was good. So um, I also have lived here for almost 30 years, so I also know a lot of things that are going on, uh, whether they're formal or just informal. Um, 
But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear from, I'd like to get all our board positions filled. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really a priority because um, I think we have to get new energy um, on our committees. Um, it was good to see we got a, a school committee person voted in, even though it only took a few votes, but hey, a few votes matter, right? Um, so anyway, glad to be here and I'm um, happy to help in any way again. Great. I also wanted to um, make sure that each member of the board is an emissary to other committees and mm -hmm. boards, or at least the larger um, ones that we deal with on a, on a regular basis. Um, I've already been kind of working with both Ron and um, Don, so I figured I could just keep that going where I can be the, the go-to for the police department and the highway department. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be a good idea, Erica, since you're good at um, getting the word out, socializing mm -hmm. and, and advertising, that it might be good for you to work with Bob. Um, because his main problem is getting volunteers, sure. and maybe there's some idea you could come up with to help him with volunteers, mm -hmm. volunteering. Elaine, you're already part of the school board, that yeah. has a school board. Yeah. It would only make sense for you to be the communication with the select board and the school board. Absolutely. And um, outside of that, really, I, I, you know, we have obviously EMS, but there's really not a whole lot going on there. Mm -hmm. I could stay in contact with them as well since I'm also part of the Capital Improvements Committee. So I'm okay with taking all on all of that. And I was a member of CONCOM for like nine years, so if they oh, need somebody. That'd be great. Um, still remember some of those things? Yeah. Um, actually, you and I can both tackle that since great. I have experience um, in my personal personal life for great. that. Um, Cather? Um, I don't know if somebody wants to be a. <laughs> like, who wants to do it? Adam? <laughs> Lori. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> um, good point. I'm so abused. <laughs> um, I mean, probably I, either you or me because we live close by. Yeah, I'm happy to be the liaison for the town. Yeah. Park. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll make Erica. Erica has more tolerance for me than you do. <laughs> I'm also happy to do it at any point. Um, yeah, we'll just end up I can also take the transfer station. I'm always talking to the guys up there. Yeah. I mean, of course, I'm still going to be communicating yeah. Yeah. with everybody, but I think this is great. <laughs> um, do we want to talk about the um, emergency contact? Um, I cannot remember the name, the nomenclature. EMD. Oh, our EMD? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know Amanda, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing fire. Yeah, that makes sense. That kind of makes yeah. sense yeah. to do yeah. EMD okay. too. You okay with that? Yeah, I'm totally okay. And that, that. Kind of, that kind of brings in ambulance as well. Yeah. Right. Basically, so. Right. Yeah, so yeah, EMS then for Erica, because Jim and Chris don't really need a whole lot usually, but <laughs> you never know. Um, we don't have to vote on those, right? It's just delegating? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, okay. you're just. And then Lori. Sir. Did you want to rescind the discussion and vote? I on? actually don't okay. because we're so close to the end of the fiscal year mm -hmm. that I mean, and there's still a lot of state deadlines that I have to be in my office for. I'm just afraid that no matter how hard I try, I might not be able to take everything I have. Okay. So I would still like to request that you allow Jan to roll it over just in case I can't take it all. This is, um, Elaine, this, so this is yep. uh, for rolling over PTO oh, as on opposed board. to, okay, yep. got it. Um, you know, we don't need to say too much on this, but yep. you know, we're very lucky to have a local town admin and a local town clerk. It's right. pretty rare nowadays. So, right. um, and they've been with us for a while, so I see no issue with this. So I'll make a motion to vote um, to allow the town clerk to uh, use vacation rollover. Is there like a period of time that is extended for, or is it just? 
You can only you can only use rollover from the prior year, correct? You're only supposed to be able to roll over 50% of what you've earned each year, mm -hmm. but I have just over a week more than mm -hmm. that 50%. Okay. So that needs that, to be used by when? That would have had to be used by the end of this month. And that's what I'm asking to be rolled over to because roll over all of, of unforeseen yeah. circumstances. So roll over an additional week. Right. For right. a year? For FY25. For okay. year. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to okay. try yeah. to take it off. Right. <laughs> but I just can't yep. guarantee it. So in my you motion. Can um, you clarify something there? You can roll over everything that you get for a year's, a year's worth. Yeah, a Jan gave me a number of, that I'm going to, an amount that I'm going to lose if I don't use it by the okay. end of the month. I'm just saying, you said only half you okay. could roll over. My you mistake. can roll over a full year's worth. Okay. okay. I just don't take enough vacation time. Yeah, I like I never take vacation <laughs> yeah, time. Obviously. <laughs> this is us telling you to take some vacation Yes. Work. Yeah. <laughs> so added to my motion is an additional week that was going to be lost by the end of this month. Yeah. Yeah. Second. I have no problem with that at all. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Unanimous. Thank you, Lori. Thanks for working so hard. All right, next on the agenda is the discussion and vote on the clarification of guidelines for public comments. I sent a draft. Did you see the very bottom of everybody's pen? Yes. Okay. It was just printed out. Which, and this was taken from, Bernie had shared some stuff from various, um, several different towns. So this was just kind of, I okay. don't know if you all had a chance to look at that, but. Um, should probably read these aloud for the public, correct? Yeah, I mean, and this is just the this is just the proposal, basically. This is okay. So in this proposal, it states the select board may reserve time for public comments on its open meeting agenda at each meeting. The purpose of the public comment period is to bring matters of public interest to the attention of the board. Public comment sessions are for speakers to address the board on matters that are not related to any other agenda item. If a speaker wishes to address the board on a matter related to an agenda item, the chair may accept public comment when that agenda item is reached during the meeting. Persons may speak upon the permission of the chair of the select board and must stop speaking upon the request of the chair. Individuals should identify themselves by full name and address. So it's very similar to the town meeting. It's, yeah, basically. Um, during public comment portions of the meeting, members of the public are allowed up to two minutes to speak may speak only once and only when recognized by the chair and may not yield time to another speaker. Public comment sessions are limited to 15 minutes total. That's a very important distinction there. Uh, redundant comments are discouraged. If multiple speakers wish to talk on the same subject, they are encouraged to choose one spokesperson. All speakers must present their remarks in an orderly and peaceable manner without disruption to other speakers and must refrain from making any personal, impertinent, unduly repetitive, or slanderous remarks. Speakers are further encouraged to respect the views and opinions of others, including members of the select board and the general public. Public comment is not intended for the select board debate with the general public or meant to answer questions without the time needed for proper research. Answers shall be provided as soon as possible to the inquiring party. <coughs> It is the chair's responsibility to ensure that personal matters and personalities are not discussed, nor shall unprofessional or uns uh, excuse me, unsubstantiated comments <coughs> be accepted. Um, clearly, there's reasons for this. Um, so I, I think this is a great outline. Erica, thank Excellent. you for writing that up. Um, Erica? And uh, yeah, you're, all you're doing is clarifying what already exists in the town. Yeah. Town meeting rules. Yeah, they're basically the, the town meeting rules. And I guess I had, I mean, yeah, Veronique was the one who pointed out that we didn't actually have any, like, real public mm -hmm. comment rules. Um, so I think the main difference is that, like, if some of the towns said, you know, there will be public comments at every meeting, I said may, because I feel like that should be, you know, at our discretion. Like, budget season, maybe, when it's mm -hmm. like, when we have, you know, those are super long meetings, mm -hmm. we may not want to entertain public comment. <laughs> And I think it's really important to limit it. Um, I think one of the, uh, most of the other towns was either three minutes per speaker and a total of 15 minutes or a total of 20 minutes. I felt like this was, I don't know. If you need more than two minutes to say what you want to say, I think <laughs> you need to 
think a little harder and come back. School committee got better, you know, better at that when we were all virtual with everybody had something to say about COVID. Yeah. Um, but we didn't actually limit time, but I like limiting time. And like, that's what we do at town meeting too. Like, right. you know, you say what you have to say once. Because well, um, then you have to think ahead what you're going to say and be succinct. Yeah. Versus just rambling. Right. And we do want to encourage people to be able to come and talk, but we should also encourage um, civility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to stick to the subject because oftentimes it goes off off subject. Yeah. Correct. And I think of a few select board meetings in the recent past. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think yes. especially when we have joint meetings and they with other committees so that are meant to start at a specific mm -hmm. time, it's very important to respect mm -hmm. the time of the rest of our committee members. Yep. But so, and that includes basically everybody except the select board. When the select board is speaking, you know, you recognize somebody to speak. Like I just chimed in, so I would probably go, "Can I say something?" <laughs> well, you know, yeah, it's up to it's up to the board. Yeah, I'm yeah, just speaking saying, as part of like public, yeah, like yeah, you're right. But I mean, and I think the other thing too is like it's not that's this is it's not meant to be a period of open debate. It's for people to you know raise issues mm -hmm. and for yeah. us to be thoughtful about, but not necessarily engage. And for me to shut it down if I see it going off of the rails. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> well, it's, not, yes. it's not public comment period. You're the town administrator. Yeah. So okay, I just didn't want, you know, I want to. Um, this is an agenda item. Yeah, no, I think this is, this is excellent. Would you like me um, to take this to town council for her review and then get back to you if she has any comments about it? Sure. Um, yes, but I mean, this isn't a. It's not really a policy, though, is it? I mean, it's more. Yeah. Of, okay. Yeah, and when I did speak with her before, because of certain First Amendment rights, mm -hmm. things that are going on in this mm -hmm. arena, she said that it was very important for the board to have clarity on what policy you want, and then it's easy to draft. But because of that, I, I just would love to have her review it and give it her blessing. Then. Okay, so I think the vote should be for the council to review, not for us to vote on this mm -hmm. until council gets back to us. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and make a motion. Hold on one second. Yep. Um, are your meetings, can people speak remotely? Yep. Yes. Or is yeah, that yeah. All the person? Yep. Okay. No, it can be over. So with school committee, we said if you were speaking remotely, you had to contact the superintendent ahead of time that you want or you planned on having time. That's a good point. You're requesting time because we may or may not notice they have a comment. Right. But it's also... And it also goes back to them identifying themselves of who they are, right. where they live, without just the screen name right. and the blank screen on there. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just how to work that in. Could we say function. at the beginning of each meeting, you know, if you're joining us on Zoom and you wish to make a comment during public comment, please raise your hand because I'm always watching the screen anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, because I have to let people in. Yeah. So I've always got to yeah. keep my eye on it so I could, you know, if somebody raises their hand and if I miss it, he'll. Nudge me. <laughs> okay. I have a suggestion. Somebody run a timer. Yeah, them. yeah. I think that's that's important too. <laughs> you know what? I'll get one friend here that yeah. we can put Do up there. <laughs> yeah, I'll actually get one. So, did you make a motion, Chris? Uh, yes. No. Um, I will make a motion to allow Veronique to. Um, send these bulletin points to town council so we can vote on it later. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Moving on. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to vote on the annual appointments and there are quite a bit. So I'll just read through them. Are you the only one who needs to sign or do you all? Uh, I'm the only one. Yes, Chris. Okay. For the Cable Advisory Committee, the one and only Bob Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Cemetery Commission, still Jack Harrison, who's done an excellent job. Community Preservation Committee, Donald Drollman. Did I say that right? Community Preservation Committee, William Mobius. 
Also, the Community Preservation Committee, Carolyn Thayer. Also on the Pre Community Preservation Committee, Jack Farrell. Council on Aging, Robin Yerkes. Council on Aging, Henry Horseman. Council on Aging, Gail Connolly. Cultural Council, Stein Pike. Cultural Council, Joan Haley. Cultural Council, Sophie Michelle. Michelle. Ooh, front. <laughs> My neighbor. <laughs> Can I speak? Open Space Committee, Janet Chase. Uh, Open Space Committee, Amy Anderson. Uh, open Space Committee, Michelle Tor. Parks and Rec Recreation Committee, Julie Sweet. Public Buildings Committee, Chris Herman. Public Building Committee, Ken. I always mess up his name. <laughs> oh, we met. We met. These are French names. Uh, Sustainability Committee, Jody Lally. Town Treasurer, Janice Warner. Now, how long is that? <clears throat> These, I think, with Jan and Lori, it's because of their positions and they need to be appointed periodically. So, okay. because we did away a while ago, we did away with appointing staff members, mm -hmm. but hers is a special position. Hers and Lori is treasurer collector. Got it. Okay, well, speaking of assistant town treasurer, Lori Hall. <laughs> and that is it. Um, I vote we approve. The annual appointments as read. Second. Oh, okay. Oh, I read this as well. well now we need to appoint somebody. Yeah. Oh, yes, the Franklin Regional County of Government's um, representative. So is that the one you said that you could do, but you can't yeah, make a meeting I, on the Yeah, I mean, because I, I have been the deputy or whatever, the alternate, okay. and I've, I've attended for cause meeting, so I'm, I'm totally fine being the representative. I just definitely cannot go to this particular meeting on Thursday. So it no. should be recorded. If it's not, I'll take copious amounts of notes. Okay. So you're going to go? I will go You'll to You'll be the alternate? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Erica is the new rep, and Chris is the alternate. Oh. Question from John. Yes, sir. Is there a personnel committee appointment? I didn't see, see that. I didn't have any. Um, my term, my, my appointment to the personnel committee it was just ends this month. I was going to say oh, your okay. list sounds short. We, because because we were staggering them. Oh, all right. Right, and my appointment was only for the remainder of this year. And the the plan was if nobody else stepped up, that you could I'd be open to reappointment. But I understand that Stephanie Recor has raised her hand. Oh yes. For, I'm sorry, for which committee? Personnel committee. Oh, okay. There's one board appointed position, and I'm that, yeah. that position. But I understand that Stephanie's raised her hand and she wants to serve on personnel committee. Okay. And I'm perfectly willing to step aside and let Stephanie take on because I think it's not really appropriate for Phyllis and I both to be on the same committee anyway. Right. Okay. All right. So we'll put her on. There are some appointments that we're doing next. Thanks. Yeah. Next okay. Meeting. So many more had to be put. There were a few that had to be. Off yeah, that's fine. I, I'm just yeah. curious. Um, again, I move that we um, approve the appointments as read, including the for cause. Uh, uh, sir, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. That's 624. That's six minutes <laughs> early. So maybe we can talk about uh, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Um, vote and sign on the solid, solid waste management district contract for fiscal year 25. Not much we can do there. So um, I looked it over. It's the numbers uh, Jan prevented, uh, presented to us prior. Um, so I'll make a motion to vote and sign, and sign the solid waste management district contract for fiscal year 2025. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And maybe we should save the uh, priority list um, for after. There was a second thing that came up. Oh, oh, okay. It was the um, it was um, the highway. Oh, the budget. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you have that? I do. Okay. 
Um, let's get to that. This was the vote that the board already took, but we didn't have a specific breakout by last I'm so sorry, Ron. Is that why you're here? One of the reasons. Okay. <laughs> but that's on the finance committee. Yeah, shouldn't we have that on the finance committee? No, this is you're no. setting a salary. This is nothing. Oh, about. no, I'm looking at this. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm looking at the wrong yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I have that in front of me? I don't. Okay. Um, so this is pretty basic. We're not changing any of the actual um, uh, hourly wages. It's just about how Ron can post or pay based on licenses and um, um, competencies with uh, obviously the licenses and the certi certifications. And um, experience. And experience, right. So, did you want to discuss this or you just want me to read through this? Uh, it's pretty basic. Yeah, it's very basic. So, it's just a breakdown of the approval for clarification on um, how Ron can um, either post or pay um, members of the highway department based on their licenses. So, for 2B hoisting licensed, can we read these out loud, right? It's fine if we read these out loud. Okay, it would be $23. Um, that's, a, that's a, we're talking CDL licensed drivers. Right, so commercial driver's license. Mm -hmm. um, additional licenses, 2A, what does 2A refer to? All right, so 2B is required, at least within six months of being employed. But that is a requirement for, to have be a CDL driver. You mm -hmm. also need a, a minimum for a hoisting license of a 2B which is to run the bucket load. Um, 2A, which is an additional 50 cents, that's 2A hoisting licenses so you can run an excavator. And a 4G, which is another 50 cents if you have that license, is for our over the fence more. And there's a note here that says a minimum of three years experience as a CDL driver. Right, it's three dollars more. Got so it. the base, base to start, um, the minimum is a CDL Class B with a Class um, two two B license for twenty three dollars. Got it. So our pay rate is between twenty three and twenty seven. Right. So the max is still twenty seven, which was right. already approved. This is just a breakout of the pay scales. Mm -hmm. So effectively, we just established a salary band. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Based on experience. Or wage manager. Right. Yeah. Right. So I see no issue with this. I'll go ahead and make a motion to vote um, for the uh, to to vote for the highway department to be allowed to use the breakouts of the pay band, pay scales for each employee. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Can I ask one more question? So I'm assuming this will carry over to job descriptions, like be permanently more memorialized in job descriptions? No, I don't think no? so. No. Okay. This will just be our, our internal. Yeah, this is a pay scale issue. Okay. This is outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that ends our uh, unanticipated items. And we are one minute away from the Joint Committee with finance committee. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we do not have quorum. So. And is Roy, mm -hmm. Roy said he would try to zoom in. Um, I don't know if... Let's talk about priorities. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only part that you would have to have a quorum for is for the, yeah. that one the, you the have transfers. to have a quorum. Yeah. 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 So just so I'm, I'm not skipping over, because Ron is sitting here waiting patiently, we can't do anything without the forum for the Finance Committee to discuss this item, correct? Right. You okay. can't, it can't be signed. I mean, the okay. select board can, but the Finance can, Committee can't until okay. they have a forum. So let's just wait then. Yeah. Um, but Ron is also here to talk about priorities, too. Okay. So. Well, why don't we open yeah. the floor to our <laughs> highway speaker? Yeah. Yeah. Put it on the spot, Ron. I mean, the, the idea is just to, you know, it, 
now the budget season's done, town meeting's done, it just seemed like a good time to sort of sit back and go, okay, what's risen to the top in the town for what needs to get done and have everybody just put out ideas as what the priorities are and then you can so direct them. I'm gonna get my timer real quick. <laughs> So the highway priorities are the problem. You don't say. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> well, there's probably a few other things that they're involved in. For this year, our major projects are, well, we have Delaware Ave that we have a FEMA grant mm -hmm. that hopefully got postponed. We've been asking. We applied for an extension, and I don't think we've heard back, right? But I've been filing my quarterlies, and there doesn't seem to be any issues with that. So that is a big priority. Upper Baptist, actually all the streets on that side are a priority this year. Um, Cemetery Hill Baptist, Upper Baptist, Ives, and Delaware, the rest of Delaware. Emerson? No, no. it's Gravel Road. So. Okay. But um, with the study there, GZA is holding me back for moving forward with anything like this until we get their feedback back, but I don't know how we're going to move forward. Um, doesn't seem to be any major issues with water. Um, so the, the residents up there who have hired their own environmental engineer as well, or um, is that, I mean, I'm assuming that they're going to be in contact with GCA, but. <coughs> well, so yes, and they have, and I spoke with Rosalie today um, because the residents were interested in at what point if they could give some feedback, but the thing is that study is about public infrastructure. So really the only point at which um, the, the residents will be involved is when GZA actually does the public forum with the select board to report on what they found. Okay. So, and was the person that they hired, were they a hydro expert? Civil, civil engineer. Civil engineer. So it's different. Yeah, that's different. And when you're talking what the town is paying to have done and then you start putting private, it becomes an issue. Um, because now you're, it's not a bad thing to look at, but it, you've got to be careful with what happens that you're not doing something to favor certain residents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, agreed. Totally agreed. May I ask a question about that area? Sure. The, the rubble pile up that's at the triangle by George's? Just haven't had time to get it out. Okay, I was wondering if it was there for a reason. No, okay. just the time and, and that's hopefully with what we just, um, the pay scale, mm -hmm. the pay raises, hopefully, I'm hoping within one, at least we have one more employee. Okay. Um, we are actually, we, one of my labor positions, one that does uh, building maintenance, and he's retired at the end of this one, so. Right. So now I got three positions. Things are being difficult to get done because yeah. there's so much other stuff that's going on. That, can you hire um, temps? I do have a temp right now. Um, tired finding a temp with licenses that can drive what we have to drive. The problem with a lot of times with temps with CDL is you got to train or for what we do, and that takes time. So if you hire a temp and you spend the time and then they're only here for a short period of time. 
We've had that issue with just hiring a normal full-time employee, and when they don't work out, you've wasted all that time. So it's hard. I'm hoping the pay is, made, is going to make a difference. But just about every town around in the last month has been looking for CDL drivers. And most towns have been increasing their pay as well. Yes. So there's going to be competition. Yes. And we may just be on the low end again. Yeah. yeah. Um, my other projects, well, we just chip sealed Old Cricket Hill up to the dump and South Shirtshire Road. Them both were paved two and a half years ago. They needed to have a top put on a protective pavement. And then we did the other end of Shum Falls Road, which was starting to get a little ratty. Mm -hmm. Um, should have been done last year, but we all know how last year went. <laughs> um, other projects. All the streets. Um, also in the streets that I'm hoping to do something with is Parsons Road, mm -hmm. Elm Street, and the black dot section of Reeds Bridge on this side. So hopefully, 60% of our streets will be, oh, and Orchard Street and Main. Oh, yeah. So they're all in <laughs> in there. Um, a lot of work to be done, but we still have storm damage yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of work that needs to be done with that. And, um, speaking of that. Um, how's, how's Conway Station Road now? Passable. It is passable. I just know it's. It yeah. was a pretty I don't know if the tubing company is still running or whatever, but they run vans up and down that road. And we, this spring we got it so it was fairly decent, and then we only had a pretty major rainstorm there this spring, and they developed a major sinkhole. Right, it washed down at the beginning, or so at the yeah. end it always washes out, but at the beginning it washed out. It just sunk. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. So we filled that back in the past month. Um, talking storm damage, paving, we need to fix what Maximilian did, or Mass DOT did, I should say, on Main Bowen Road. Mm -hmm. So they're coming in the end of this month to put an overlay on Chapel Falls. I think it's, uh, Two hundred and forty ton. I, I think it's like thirteen hundred feet up the hill. To straighten that mess up. That road was pretty decent before it started. Mm -hmm. And also, we're going to do on an overlay on Elm Road. Okay. Uh, Cardo's Ferry yep. down the hall. I think that worked out pretty good. Yeah. And the other thing is, with hopefully with the money transfer, um, Cardo's Ferry from Shum Falls Road to Station Road. Mm -hmm. Oh, gee, what else? There's <coughs> plenty of other projects going <laughs> on. Um, Does your team do the mowing <coughs> too, or do you subcontract the mowing? We do the mowing. That's a lot. Yes, we do a lot. Could you subcontract that <coughs> if you don't? I mean, I know a lot of guys in town do mowing. So the problem you is that you get into a prevailing wage and all that stuff, and it becomes very expensive. Prevailing wage laws have really, they really started hitting us hard with it. Have we had any complaints about the mowing cycles for the ball field since we are doing less? No, but the, we have a new contractor this year, and I can't tell when. It's all over the place when you're down there mowing. Really? So, yeah. But okay. the cemetery next to me looks great. Better than it's almost ever looked. I don't know who's doing that one. That's just say Ron. No. Oh, somebody else that does that? <laughs> yeah, that's a private. The one by you and the one on John Ball's road. Wow, there it's better than it's looked in years. I'll tell Kenny you said that. Yeah, it's really good. 
Sir? Is, there, is there still a, a plan to have a monthly report on the highway department uh, activities and priorities as was set forth last year? Yes, but I'm going to be the liaison, mm -hmm. so I'll do that with so him you'll be, at the okay. highway department. Okay. So Ron doesn't have to keep coming in here. Right, right, that's fine. Yeah. And I have, I have a question. So, like, I wrote down 10 projects. Like, are these ranked? Like, what are the top three? What are the top five? And are there budgets for each of these projects, like, you know, hours, you know, problems like capacities. Said, we're waiting on so many things for a lot of them, right? So we're still waiting on the GZA for right. the Baptist Hill area. FEMA for Delbar. FEMA for but Delbar. But we, we would potentially, oh, so that, that, would, that would impact what could be done up there, is that correct? So we wouldn't have a budget. A firm budget. There, there'd be no point in doing it. Right, of because time, we don't know what the we scope might have of the work to rip is it up and do it right. again. Right. right. <laughs> so but there are a lot of these projects that we do, Ron, and you have a pretty good idea because this goes back to what you've been doing your whole life. So um, do you have like budgets set out for this, this section of Shelburne Falls Road? Like you're using this 85,000, I think it is, that we're talking about tonight to, to pave that section. So. Um, here yeah, and, and I guess where, where I'm going with this is one of the concerns, you know, we, we all agreed on the, the pay increase because we know how important it is to get your, your team staffed up. And you've been working with a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. And so you've had no, no capacity internal and you've had to assume all that yourself. And one of the things I think we should agree on is that, that A, top priority, let's staff up the department as best we can given the resources we have, but we also have to understand what the capacities of the department are and where they're going to be allocated so that, you know, we have these other side projects going on. Do you want to open your committee? If you yeah, have yeah, we can do that, yeah. I make a motion to call the uh, Finance Committee into order. Second. All right. Which is actually why I asked the, prior, the ranking question. Well, I'm still going. So uh, I make a motion to approve the uh, finance committee meeting minutes of May 20th. Second. All, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. All Great. Right. Now we can continue. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, the priority ranking. The qu question was, you know, yeah. priorities, timing of the, you know, anticipated start and end dates for the project capacities, hours, budgets, that kind of stuff. So we have sort of a, a good communication of what what's going on and where the work, when the work is expected to start, and then, and then what are the, the barriers to, to successful completion. Like we have this, you know, study that has to be completed up there. So it, it may be a high rank, but we can't do anything until there's <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, no, it's fine. I just, I just wanted to mention, um, not only do we have to wait for the GZA study, but the town did apply through MVP specifically for that area, and we should be finding out about the award for that late July, mm -hmm. early August. Mm -hmm. And if we get that, a lot of the funding was going to actually pay for the infrastructure that would be used up there. Yeah. So if that comes through, that would be part right. of the Right, so this is a yeah. project that's on the list, but it's yeah. it's all dependent upon yeah. these right. other, you know, contingencies. So, so I think we could do, them. <laughs> yeah, I think we could have, maybe you and I could work on creating a list of some of the projects. I just want to make sure, since he is dealing with the skeleton crew, that a lot of his time is not focused on creating reports for us. So I, it, I wouldn't, agree, it yeah. wouldn't be main, a yearly maintenance or anything like that, just the special project. No, but the capacity itself is, is such a critical component right. of this, and that's why we sort of found ourselves in this position this past year with the, you know, the, the public safety building and the transfer station and the pickleball courts, right. and all of a sudden there's only one run, right? right. <laughs> and there's and there's there, there was other issues here. There, yeah, we, I mean, we yeah, have granted, but but there's to a do with my time. Well, it, it did, but but not <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not what stopped the project. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's not what stopped. I, I, yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't want to rehash yeah. all that. Yeah. I think my, my point saying. is about understanding the department's capacity to take on this work and not scheduling all these special projects on top of the fact that you you're understaffed by sixty percent. Yeah. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But when you when we take them extra projects on, them are on off time. I don't feel that my job 
is supposed to be 80 hours a week. If I want to make it 80 hours, that should be on me, but it shouldn't be a requirement because if it is, we're going to change things drastically. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It's a, I've done things for this town to help this town, and things got out of So you're saying special projects are outside of the normal operating hours of the highway department? Most definitely, okay. and that's the way it's always been. When we did the highway garage, 90% of that time was done on outside of normal. Because mm -hmm. not having enough help in the first place puts us way behind in our normal duties. Right, right, yes. right, and right, exactly. So as far as extra projects, they don't happen during normal hours. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and that's why it's always been overtime for any of the highway department that works on them. Mm -hmm. um, We're also applying for a lot of grants, yeah, right? Yeah. For like the Shelburne Falls Falls Road issues, um, the the culvert, the block culvert there. Yeah. So I mean, there's we we can update the finance committee on that. So there's certain ones that are on hold pending, yeah. but I yeah. assume there's a few that are not waiting on anything that could be, you know, possibly well, we moved up the priority list because we're not waiting on anything. We have to tie everything in with contractors that we use for, yeah. you know, the, right. the payment right. and reclaiming and all that stuff. And that's a lot of the timing issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think one of the original goals of this was was just more communication and transparency uh, yeah. for public transparency for what's yeah. going on, right. and and that's really the important part of it is to make sure that we all understand what's on the list, when is it scheduled to start, what right. are what are the holdups, you know. Right. Um, actually, the Facebook page of the Highway Department does a great job. Oh, do they? That's of a great updating. Mm -hmm. What what work is going to be done? Oh, okay. wow! So, it hasn't been done in a while. The Facebook page, <laughs> oh, not yeah, Highway. Not the highway. Oh, uh, which page am I? What, I don't that? know. Well, it was during the flooding. Yeah. Oh. It was updated. Yeah, it was updated very, very regularly. Yeah. yeah. But but Ron doesn't have that position right now. Oh, got it, got it, got it. I'm well, sorry. It's not only that. There's just so much stuff <laughs> yeah. that's been yeah. going right. on that I had yeah. to put that one aside. Okay. So I'll I'll make that my task to. Okay. It would be helpful to have a project which can be done in a potential funding source. And right. Uh, if we're also, going to outsource some of the work to uh, private paving contractors and whatever, to see have all some that estimates. stuff, I have to bid. Yeah. To for um, mm -hmm. that's who we typically bid. Right. Right. So I have to have that plan back in March. Yeah. Like March of pretty much every year. Um, but the list that I make doesn't necessarily mean the one I'm gonna that ends up being followed because. Well, yeah, things, we, yeah, things happen. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. But, but at least you have a baseline. A, you still need a baseline. Yeah, you yeah. Still, at least you have a list that, that yeah, is your list of priorities and the projects that you're planning to so do. So typically how the highway department does their budget is when we do projects, typically the only thing I hire out for subcontractors is reclamation of the blacktop or milling mm -hmm. and paving. Mm -hmm. and line painting and stuff like that there. I haven't done it in a few years now, but um, typically we do all the uh, infrastructure work. Because mm -hmm. yeah. to then you when you do infrastructure work, you have to have an engineer design it so people know what they're bidding on. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a huge expense. Yes, yeah, a request for. I mean, it's, it's any forward. project you're probably looking at forty thousand dollars minimum mm -hmm. to have somebody draw up some plans, mm -hmm. where we just go and do, it. Mm -hmm. you know. So it's a huge savings to the town all the way around. It's, but then you, when you do things like that, then you got to do all your bidding and all that stuff, and a small project's going to cost you two, three hundred thousand dollars, and there goes all my operating budget. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so you don't you don't even have money to do our normal maintenance stuff. Mm -hmm. See, this we we do a lot of maintenance. Unfortunately, last year we didn't get to do a lot after July because yeah. we spent more time fixing roads. But um, there's a lot of maintenance work, cleaning culverts, um, yeah, sure. roadside mowing, trees, um, trees. <laughs> Luckily, they've slowed down yeah. since last year. So. 
Um, but we still have few. But um, it's all that stuff. It's timing is trying to set a schedule is next to impossible. It's, I come in in the morning, and before I get to work, I get a phone call of something going on where we have to change all our plans to go do something else. Um, why didn't that happen? Why? Because yeah. rain or um, tree mean, comes down. I guess. I guess my question is, it does it happen every day? No. Does it happen once a week? <laughs> It happens when things happen. I, I, you know, I guess the thing that I'm really struggling with is, I understand that priorities need to change, but I also personally believe that baselines are important, and you have to have a baseline of activity, some kind of plan for the year. And if the plan changes, the baseline can be changed, and the assumptions can be changed. But to just say, I only, I can only deal with what I find, the, what I have to do every day, is not a good. Is not a good basis for I getting information. Yeah, well, that's what I heard. It's not a good basis for getting information that the finance committee or the capital improvements committee needs to be able to make the decisions that we're going to have to make in a couple of months. Okay. So I just told you a whole list of roads that we're planning on mm -hmm. right. repairing. Right. Which yeah. is why I asked the question about a ranking. They're all tied together. Well, there must be one that's at the top of the list. We're going to do them all at the same time. It's the size of the project. So they're all one project? Pretty much that's what it's, how we do it. So they're all short streets. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not so like we're going to go do bar, two miles Upper of Baptist, those, that right. So you do it in stages. You, you, you would rip up the same streets, or are you saying no, that we'll try to do streets? Well, we, when we get in, because we have to deal with normal maintenance yeah. of stuff. Mm -hmm. When we do our projects, we do that when we kind of have time, get caught up with things. Because time of the year changes what our maintenance mm -hmm. things are. I mean, like right now, we're actually early, but the roadside mowing's now a huge issue. Right, right. So not having a fully staffed, that means that a lot of our projects get pushed off. Get pushed back, yeah. and then we cram to get them so that we can. Right, right. But typically what I try to do is the projects that I hope to do in the for the year, for the fiscal year, is the pavement and the, when we hire the contractors, I typically try to do that mm -hmm. in the springtime, yeah. April, May, mm -hmm. because they're less, the contractors less busy mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, but weather does create issues, you know, because sometimes winter doesn't end as quick as we like. Um, so that gives us basically from now, until next spring to get the things that we need to do in them projects like boards and all that stuff that needs to get taken care of before we can do a, do the paving and stuff. So, so like you gave us a list of, of 10 projects, mm -hmm. Delavoir and Upper Baptist obviously waiting on because there's other factors that play there, but like the other eight roads, would you be able to say like, the goal is I'm going to do this one, you know, in two weeks. I'm going to do the next one no. in four weeks. That's not that's not how you're. It's all a group. So, so because I can't have the paving company come and do one. Okay, row. all right. That's you know, what it is step. It is steps then. It is steps for so, us. Yes, right. that's so, so, right. in so the you end, when they on. come in, they're going to do a whole bunch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you're going to bring okay. them in when you're ready yeah. to have them come in and do, and do them all. Yeah, that makes sense. Because well, when the brand money's ready, road, and yeah, the yeah, rip right. all things right. are the right. same day. Right. So in the same day, they can come and pay. Well, 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 you know. Yeah. In a short period of time. So the roads are just less disruptive. I mean, unfortunately, we had to mill Upper Baptist because the pavement was just we. Yeah. There's no way we were going to be able to plow it because it was so torn up from mm -hmm. you know being deteriorated so bad. That's why that got milled. That didn't get milled because of the storms. We didn't. This honestly, the storms didn't have any issues up there. I know roadway itself, um, other than one over the road. But, so typically, that's how we yeah. Work. 
So, you know, again, I, without the, not beating a dead horse here, just saying the goal is communication and transparency so that we all have a sense of, you know, what the work is going to be for the coming fiscal year and what a rough schedule of events are and what the dependencies are for that, I think. Yeah, and then funding sources. Funding sources. And funding sources. And cost and funding sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So one of my biggest problems was my budget was done in um, February. We don't know what the prices of anything is until yeah. May. So it it's really hard to plan what you want to do. But you still have a plan. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. You still want to do something. Yes. Okay. We, with the question is whether you can or not. Right. You know, your plan revolves around, well, there's my priorities, and here's the top five things that I know I have to get done, and here's like the next five things I would like to get done if I can. Right. Yeah. So maybe if, since you're the liaison, mm -hmm. um, and there is a new Town Conway Mass Facebook page, so what you and I could do is we could talk about what the updates are, and I could start posting them until you get somebody in the office. As long as I don't have to touch Facebook. No, I'll, uh, I'll do the posting. <laughs> but that way we could, yeah. you know, at least push that out to the community. Oh, good. Yeah. I have a question. Are there any payment condition next reports that are being filed at all for the state? For chapter I'm, I'm sorry? PCI reports, payment oh. condition index reports. Are there any that are being done? Mm -hmm. One point we had an assistant that position that we created that helped with all of it. For the paving reports for chapter for nine? roads and paving condition index reports. Oh, uh, uh, pavement maintenance. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have. Them. So we're not doing them because my goal on the paving is mm -hmm. to we're close to being where we can just do pavement management mm -hmm. on our roads. Great. What I've been working on a lot since I've been here is to get our roads to get to that level. Mm -hmm. um, there's very few roads that we've been able to just do a pavement um, maintenance program on. Mm -hmm. um, we still have two very bad roads. That are, they won't be this year, but hopefully next year, the following mm -hmm. year is um, Church Year, South Church Year Road, the other, this end of South Church Year Road, mm -hmm. and um, Rowan Brook Road. Um, the weight uh, 116 in. Yeah. I have a question. Are there any of these uh, projects that can still be paid for through the uh, state allocation of the flood damage? Because you had mentioned about That's some of the flood related. what I was talking about with the uh, um, main Pullman Road and yeah. Elmer Road. Mm -hmm. That's where that fund is coming from. Okay. But we have, and we won't know mo until we get more closer to being in finished up. But our gravel roads need a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And we're going to spend a lot of money on materials for them roads. Mm -hmm. And a greater. I can't take that out of the emergency money, can I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's a good question, though. <laughs> they want to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, they did. We the rental for one. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The I was lucky this year. I was lucky this year that I was able to rent a greater. Good. Um, but trying to find last year, I couldn't find one at all. Um, so that's not a viable option. Mm -hmm. And then, like this year, when I first rented it, and then I had a snowstorm after I got it, so I basically lost two weeks where I couldn't use it at all. I have a question. Maybe Ron, you might know, if not, maybe if Ronique, and I make me more appropriately directed to Mike, Mike Cachella down accounting. That would be for the uh, snow and ice budget, you know, for the uh, highway maintenance operating budget. You know, we're under budget salaries, materials because of the uh, staffing and winter conditions and all that. And uh, we have an update through the end of May. How likely is it that's going to be much different? For the uh, by the end of June, the snow and ice budget. Because we have about seventy-seven thousand seven hundred. Yeah, I am budgeting salt all year, so yeah. we just bought four hundred ton. Um, I'm gonna try to get two hundred more ton. Okay. And then um, what about so right now I have sixty-six thousand dollars available in that budget, uh -huh. not the payroll end of it, but yeah. the operating car. You've got about 13,000, I think, in payroll, too, available that uh, yeah. the overtime, lack of overtime? 
What's that? The lack of overtime, so 13,000. Yeah, that was just because it kind of was a mild winter. Oh, first. yeah. Um, but, so by the time I get done, there's probably going to be about $16,000 in, in the operating part of the okay. um, snow and ice. And then the, oh, okay. I'm just thinking because uh, when we go into a certifier free cash, we could take that free cash and turn it over too. It's part of the funding source for these projects, right? Is that what you have in mind? No. You mean once it gets certified in September, October? Yeah. Well, then we'd well, have, have to have a town meeting, town meeting yeah. Yeah, to for, the expenditure. Uh -huh. yeah. for a vote on yeah. free cash. Yeah. But we could certainly do that if. if you know. That's what you guys want. Yeah, I forward. think it would be a good idea. Yeah. But that would that would delay things for a year, right? At this point. Uh, potentially, maybe not. But you know, we have the money. I, I well, that's some of what I'm asking for here with the uh, transfer from yeah. my payroll budget. Right. This is your primary payroll budget, right? Yes. Uh, transfer, 422. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And the reason I'm I've been down two guys for pretty yeah. much uh -huh. the whole year. Yeah. That's why there's that surplus. I'm, I don't want that surplus. I mean, yeah, no, I want the help. Yeah, we want the staff too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, should we discuss the line transfer while you're okay. here, and we need um, the finance committee to vote on this as well. He already described what it's needed for. Bardwell's Ferry. It's the reason Bardwell's Ferry got picked was because that was one of the roads that was coming up that we were wanting to do an overlay on, with. And I'm sorry, the, the timing was so late. Um, I had health issues with my wife and mm -hmm. kind of messed up everything this spring, mm -hmm. among other things. And I was trying to make things work and trying to get work done and stuff, and it's been very difficult. But So I, I knew I had that extra, and I didn't... I didn't realize that I was going to be able to get a paving company in here who has our bid for fiscal year 24. But I did. I called him and he said, we'll make it work for you. So that's where this came from. Mm -hmm. um, gives me a step up because of the money that's not being spent on payroll. It, even though it's not for payroll, it's still for the highway yeah. to yeah. accomplish accomplish things that we wasn't probably going to get done mm -hmm. and it doesn't take manpower much of our manpower to prep that road for what we want to do over there so the 85,000 is to pay the contractor and do the, and the prep work everything the whole thing the prep work the no we do the prep work it's it's just the paving. Paving. It's just they're the just paving going to contractor. come in and pay that so it's part of your operating budget then. How certain are we that the money will be there because you have to hire someone internally? But not, or you would be the only one doing the, pe the prep work? Our department is doing the prep work. We already started. I guess what I'm saying is that we haven't finished a fiscal year. June 30th is our fiscal year end. Well, see, the $85,000 isn't that project is $150,000 for the payment. Mm -hmm. So I have money because of the storm damage. My oh, okay. My materials budget didn't get used mm -hmm. as much anywhere near what. Right. So I have money in my operating budget to cover. Mm -hmm. Plus the it was the eighty five. I'll be right. able to do it. Right. So you've got one hundred thirteen thousand of unused salary. That's part of the. That's where we're going to fund it. In other words, so we've got eighty five. So we're covered. We have a little bit of leeway there. Well, I'm and then you've got the storm damage from money from the state from which we can draw, right? I can't for Bardo Ferry Road because there was oh, some damage. Right. Yeah. But I can for the other two payment projects. Oh, okay. So what's the total? So who's the contract and what's the what's the final estimate that the contractor submitted? So was, I don't have information. So in the future, it'd be helpful for us if I had that. Okay. So Bardo Ferry Road, the, the paving contractor is Warner Brothers. Uh huh. And by the way. This year, the bid price is ninety six ninety five a ton, mm -hmm. and my contract that I'll have for fiscal year twenty five, which is with Northeast Paving, mm -hmm. is one hundred and three dollars a ton. Mm -hmm. So it's going up six bucks, seven mm -hmm. bucks, um, six bucks, which makes a big difference when you're talking 
uh, Fargo's Ferry Road, we're going to just under 1,500 times. Um, for an inch and a half overlay. Um, so that road with tack, because they have to put tack down before they put the um, block top down because it's existing, is $150,000 estimated. They, it varies in tonnage changes depending on, you know, what they do with um, driveways and intersections and stuff, while well, much, and then width sometimes varies a little bit. So the tonnage changes a little bit, mm -hmm. probably a one or two percent, which mm -hmm. can make up. But then we also have escalation prices for asphalt and diesel fuel for the block top, mm -hmm. um, which I won't know that I'm gonna hope that we don't have a big difference because the diesel fuel price doesn't come out until the middle of July. Mm -hmm. for June mm -hmm. so we'd be pushing it close on because uh, um, I can't encumber it because I don't know what that number is right. um, see, there's all kinds of variables and they're not well, I can't get a firm price I mean because of the escalation. So your estimate is $150,000? Yes. Okay. We need to do a line on right item and then the other 65000 approximately would come from your regular operating budget, is that? My normal operating budget, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And the payroll budget, I didn't bring that sheet. Um, the 85000 that leaves probably, it's going to leave a couple thousand dollars by the time, because I figured some overtime and pay increases and everything that's going to happen for the month of June. Yeah. Um, so it should, it'll leave somewhere between a thousand and three thousand dollars in the payroll. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to. I wanted to make sure I didn't. You told us that, yeah. 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 Well, my comment I would have is that you know, two years, three years ago it was forty thousand. Last year it's fifty thousand. The different materials. Now we have paving. So. I mean, in the future, it'd be really helpful, I think, for the finance committee, and certainly for me, speaking for myself, that if we would have a, a ranking of projects, it would help me understand the timeline, and why and how there's a ra the rationale for selecting these different things. And uh, you know, it just came up like this for me. I'm like, well, why, this, why was not this a separate warrant item on the town uh, annual town meeting uh, as, a, as a money article? So uh, and it wasn't. Water on the bridge, I guess, for now, but in the future, I'm going to request that it please be done that way because. But we mean, can't do it for town meeting. Because of the timing of. I don't know where my budget Yeah, but you said this was part of last year and it wasn't done. What's that? You said last year, you had, if you had last year, this project would have been done. Right? This part of the ferry project was ideally would have been done last year, right? No. I did not say that. I said that. Um, the chip seal that we did on Chubbin Falls Road, I would wanted that done last year. Mm -hmm. And the road <coughs> kind of deteriorated more than I wanted it to yeah. by the time I got this done. Yeah. Right. Rado's Ferry has been on my list of things to get done, but mm -hmm. the priority to go and do a different one of my other roads would take too much of our time to prep it to be able to do it. That's why Bardwell's Ferry got picked. Mm -hmm. It needs to be done, but it's it wasn't a high highest priority. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it fits into the schedule, right? Because we we only got two weeks left here. Yeah. My my job is all about scheduling with other things and yeah. money, not knowing how money is going to get spent. Um, I, it's it's a really interesting situation to be in for the money side. I think because I understand Alan's point is that you know wouldn't we rather have a, this part of the you know the operating but the normal operating budget that we vote in a town meeting to have this eighty five thousand dollars allocated to. Well, it would be 150, right? To be allocated to, to paving for this project. Um, that yeah, way, there's transparency, the and the town gets to vote on it. And this way, it feels like, well, we allocate all this money for 
salaries and it wasn't spent and now we are the town's not deciding we as the finance committee select board are deciding to without town you know town input to, to allocate this now the reasons for all of this are very multifaceted so I, I'm gonna say we just don't want to see it be a habit that we over budget habitually to, to, to sneak in you know not oh, sneak not in sneak I know I know, I know you're not I know you're not you're trying to take advantage of a situation that, that right. we have for the for the benefit of the I'll, I'll take the help over yeah yeah the exactly so that's why yeah. I think that the goal here would be boy if you were fully staffed then we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah, no. yeah. I think that's universal too. Yeah, yeah. right. Because if you look at how much free cash we had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, talk about over budgeting. Yeah, right. That's Where's that, free cash coming well, from? Yeah, because we're all feeling feeling like wow. I'm about free cash, about 10735 was because of the over budgeting. The rest was for other other per, other reasons that were not related to budgeting. But it, it right. sounds like though, with the increased cost of materials, like it wouldn't be hard for you to like. Over, but you know, I mean, just double your materials. Probably <laughs> just ask for you know that extra money for you know the painting. I mean, if 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 you have that idea, which I know it's hard to get the pricing, but but I, I mean, I, I guess that's what I would suggest is just ask for more in your operational budget for you know materials and for and for maybe subcontractors I'll and maybe. my budget when I come in. <laughs> well, but, but, but you know, no, to, but, 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 but to John's point, right. then the town mm -hmm. votes like, no, we actually don't want these roads paved, you know, and then they've said that, and then, <laughs> and then you know. <laughs> well, a couple of years ago, we increased the uh, of the operating budget, the materials part, we increased by about seventy-five percent because it increased a sharp increase in the price of gravel and sand. Well, I mean, that's a material you can index. Yeah. You, I mean, there are any number of in, there's any number of index information yeah. for all kinds of industrial materials. Right. Now, tell you the rate of inflation in for all of that stuff. Uh, it's yeah. easy to build it into a budget. Yeah. Somebody just has to look up the index. Well, to your argue your point, mm -hmm. my gravel went from eighteen dollars a yard to thirty three dollars a yard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In one year, right, and what's and the, there's so, nobody that was saying that that was going to happen, right? Yeah. But what was that supplier basing that assumption on? We was bid it. it. Well, my question is, if you, if they, if that was their bid, that was their bid. The the pushback I would have made was, what's behind that cost increase? Is is this is this a materials charge that you're adding additional profit and margin onto? Probably demand. They all went down. It's probably demand. No, it's not. That's not how. That's not how these things are priced. And I, the only reason I say that is because I worked in supply chain for a couple of years. And what suppliers do is take their cost base plus their margin plus their overhead. And you know, if you if you benchmark your prices, your cost assumptions on index index, you know, materials prices, mm -hmm. that's that's your window into the into whether how much. How much? How much is the yeah, animal? What's, what's, what's the difference? But if you have a natural disaster, which drives up huge demand, it's which not, this whole area had a, had flooding that caused a huge no, need for yeah, this is, this is, but this Ron, is we like don't that. have long term supply contracts with any of these places, right? We we bid. Bid it you. It's, it's an annual. It's, it's an annual. Right. Yeah. So uh, like Ron can't really. I like. I feel like you can't push back and be like, I don't want to pay that much for gravel. I like those pushing back against ever since. Yes. <laughs> right. Like, we're, we're, part of a, we're part of a free market, right? We can't push back against Eversource, our only supplier of right. electricity. There's been a lot of consolidation of the sand and gravel pits. Tremendous. Yeah. It's right. a worldwide issue. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's a sand shortage. So yeah, unfortunately, we really can't say, no, we're not going to buy it from you because it's the only but people who have choice. It's a commodity product. Mm -hmm. We're not talking rare metals. Yeah, but, but we still have to get a bid for a When we bid it, it's either you accept the bid because of the procurement laws, yeah. or you don't you don't buy any. Right. Yeah. I don't have the option to say and I want a lower price. Well, yeah. plus you have to buy within a certain geographic radius of, of your yeah. need, right? right? Yeah. I mean, you're kind yeah. of limiting the eBay account. account. <laughs> so, 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 Ron, does the procurement law say you have to go with lowest lowest price? Well, I did get <coughs> myself into an issue, and I didn't. We changed. They bid all the bid all the companies give a price for their materials. Yeah. And now 
Because all materials are different, even though they right. meet the same spec. The sand right. content. Right. That all that all passes mass DOT specs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doesn't mean that they work for things that certain things work for some. But anyways, everybody bid, so I could buy from any any of the <coughs> people that had bid, and then they bid out their trucking. I did not realize until a little while ago that if you add the truck in, you have to use low bid. And that's a Massachusetts procurement law? That's what I'm being told by FERCOG. Is I, I'm pretty sure I wasn't told that in the beginning, but that's what I got told just recently. So I'm kind of bound by, and I, I don't know what to do because I don't want the material from low bid. Mm -hmm. Right because it's not going to work for us. We've already, we used some of it during the storm and... Right. Um, it washed away. You remember well, it the discussion on the sand away. content, right? Yeah. I, well, I don't know if we were part of that, but... Okay. Yeah. But we couldn't even back up the, after we spread it on the road, you couldn't back the truck up. Oh. So it's oh. not useful to us yeah. if you can't yeah. use the material. And yet you are required to... Only if the truck is... Yeah. yeah, so... Um, I've been working on other things to make things work for yeah, us, but yeah. it's a, it's, I don't have that option of saying, going to a vendor and saying, you're too high. Mm -hmm. I do all the time. I complain <laughs> about it for a long time. And it's like, yeah. Any other discussion from the Finance Committee to make a vote on the line transfer? Any discussion? No, I'm good, John. All right. So you want us to go first? Or you want first. To go? I make a motion to approve the $85,000 line item, the line item transfer for the highway budget. Uh, second. Pavement of uh, Bardwell's Ferry Road. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carriage of Adams. I'll make the same motion for the select board. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. I don't know why it has only three lines for the finance committee. Oh, there was probably yeah. another sheet. No. No. no they just write it below. Yeah. Okay. It just, yeah, everybody just, just sign it. Yeah. That's all Mike needs. <laughs> three is enough, I'm sure. Um. Okay, that brings us to, uh, oh, I guess you're, you're yeah. done. So I make a motion to adjourn the finance meeting. Well, the finance committee wanted to talk about priorities for the year. Oh, yeah. Did you guys want to stay for that discussion? Because actually you should stay, I'm sorry. Because oh. one of my priorities has to do with both the finance and the personnel committee. Oh, okay. okay. I withdraw the motion. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Did, I don't know. Did, did anybody, do you have any other priorities for things that you definitely want to see like in the future or? Well, one of them is what Ron and I had discussed. I guess I could just bring it up now. Is um, I, I would like the uh, personnel committee to look into um, the option of increasing our uh, um, insurance um, premiums. Or, or, or not the insurance. Oh, the amount, the, the amount that the town pays for the employees. The amount the town pays for the employees. The percentage. Oh, health insurance. Increased percentage, in percentage, yes. From 70 to I believe 70%. Right now, 70% right now. Yeah, to 80, at least 80. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how much the other towns actually do. I would honestly rather have 100%. Okay. Which, which universal towns? Because the personal committee did. Well, here's the, the, the thing with the towns is that I, I talked to the select board chair of Ashfield um, mm -hmm. when we were dealing with all the flooding and we yep. started talking about a few things mm -hmm. and shared resources is something that needs to be a key in small communities like ours right if they had somebody on the highway department who was capable of CDL driver and they weren't using them for a particular week and Ron wanted to use them and mm -hmm. pay Ashfield to use them yeah. we can't do that because our insurance premiums aren't comparable oh wow right mm -hmm. So there's, because of that issue, 
we're not allowed sharing resources between towns. Can you towns. explain that a bit more? I don't understand why we can't <laughs> use it. It is, Jan explained this to me before, but it has something to do with how they're paid and how much is deducted from pay and, and it has to get, Oh, in other words, that's where the payroll deduction. If they get injured, if they're working on... Um, that's workers' comp. It's not workers' comp, it's, it's their actual... The actual, actual health insurance. The actual, actual health payroll. Insurance. Yeah. So the payroll deduction, so we can match the payroll from town to this town. This makes right. no sense to me. It doesn't I, make I any sense understand. to me either. No, well. it, it makes no sense because you're actually employed by two separate entities, right? Who's paying the yeah. payroll for the... Yeah. For the Conway employee that's working in, in Ashby. Yeah, because we, we would pay the it's, town, it's, not the it's employee. It's a question right? for Jan, because she has the answer and for counsel. I mean, yeah. that, that's the that's counsel. I have to say, as personnel committee chair, I need more data. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, so, so not, not, what? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I want to find out this. why we're not allowed, allowed to share resources. And yeah. if it is because of the rate of the premium or what All the right. town contributes to the health insurance, I want to get the towns up to a standard rate. And it should be yeah. higher than it is right now because we're having issues getting um, employees, people, yeah, employees. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So instead of trying to compete with the market, which we're never ever going to be able to do, we should bring back um, the benefits. So you're saying that people that used to, to make want to work more attractive employer, a benefit would be 100% coverage. Correct. Yes. Well, then would Asheville have an issue if they only pay 80%? We would bring the same it? argument to them. So, do you want to share resources? I think I think if you looked at the difference of what it would cost for an employee hourly difference to go to 100%, I don't think it's that big of a dollar amount like per hour but that benefit if that wasn't taken out of the person's pay mm -hmm. um, it would be a huge attraction definitely it'd be a massive you know, attraction instead of raising yeah. the dollar the hourly rate like we went to 27 most a lot of towns are up to $30 an hour now yeah. that's so, true but I guess the one thing as chair of the person I'm going to have to say that you know it's going to be an increase in town insurance costs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it could be yeah. substantial. Because we'd have to do it for all employees. Well, that's what I want to see. Could it, could it be? Could it be that substantial? Well, well, well I, I, insurance mechanic, companies are not the the trans giving action. away their services. <laughs> or, yeah. The mechanics of the transaction, because if, if that person still stays in the payroll of the town, because the they're getting the benefits yeah. through there, so the town would bill us for the service of that employee. Or vice versa. And uh, so we would not be doing a payroll, running a payroll for that employee. We'd actually be getting an invoice from the town and paying. I don't the know town. how that would work. Yeah. I just want to that's, make that's sure it can. That's the kind of data work. I think I would need to right. know. And then to the your practical point, application. Yeah, to your point, you're still paying the same for the policy. It's just how you're contributing the yeah. policy, not making the employee pay a portion of the oh, policy. That's, yeah, that's a that's a kind of a different issue than what yeah. we're we're yeah. kind of confounded by, yeah. which is like the lending out of employees to other towns. Yeah. No, no, yeah. not just lending out to share. Do we really need some of the positions that we have that probably aren't at full time? Full time. At full time. So, that can, so then you could have them do part time here and part time. Correct. Talk like uh, Mike and Charlie, and then it makes it easier yes. for the employee if their yeah. insurance. If the benefits match. Yeah. So yeah. then you're, but then you're saying, but then, you know, the other thing that has to be thoroughly analyzed is if you have a part time employee under 32 hours, mm -hmm. are they still getting 100 percent? benefits and how would you divide it between towns yeah and but that's what to look into yeah, right how many jobs are, could we have yeah. that we probably aren't getting because yeah. we can only guarantee 20 hours a week yeah. i mean we're already sharing the town accountants uh, benefits are a big attraction that's more steady yeah, yeah. town council is, is an independent contract yeah, town, no, no, the town, town, town account actually, is no town, longer we're, we're not technically town account, sharing yeah. him anymore because he because is now an employee of the town account oh, okay but it's that same sort of idea yeah i mean i think yeah why stop there? You may as well consolidate lots of things, and perhaps you want to merge the two towns. Okay, I mean, this, this, I, I'm being no, yeah, a little you're, facetious you're, yeah. here, well, but I, I, do, slope, I do think right? we need our own. Uh, but I, I, I agree with you in the sense that we need our own style of furcock, right? It shouldn't just, it, and, and it should be our surrounding Is neighbors. Is that really what you're proposing? In a certain sense, but okay. I'm not proposing to, to have the towns. Congre or uh, you co uh, converge? No, not at all. Some kind of consortium? Well, no, there should be some kind of yes. There should should be con some kind of understanding that you know town small towns are dying. We all know this. Yeah. We can't keep up with the increase in the uh, taxes, right? 
if you look at the charts, it's continually going up and up. People can't afford it. We have more people that are on fixed incomes because the majority of the town are seniors that aren't working anymore. It's not a sustainable type of way of, of, yeah. of running things. And we need to find out, go outside the box, say, okay, it's not the same as it's been in the past 100 years. We need to find a new way of doing this. Well, I'm not opposed, I'm not opposed to that exercise. My reaction, again, not having any specific data to make any discussion on, is be careful what you wish for. Well, this is the start. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm no, asking for yeah. the data so <laughs> we can analyze and see. If so it maybe it would be sense. good to have our town treasurer and to discuss maybe with yeah. Michella, just in terms of the mechanics, how they how it would work, and then uh, probably swing it by our attorney, you know, our Donna McNichols, in yeah. terms of legality of it all. Well, you can also figure out how much, how many people are on our benefits and what that cost would be to raise the contribution of the Yeah, town. we can figure that out. That's the easy part. Right. <laughs> the <tip> the <laughs> challenging sure. part is who who does what and how much and who gets priority. And, and that's something you've talked about. Yeah, yeah. One, I mean, in my department, all our towns around are, were in need of the help. Yeah, that's well, right. There's no excess to, to share out. I mean, if we, if we have enough help we're never going to have too much, yeah. <laughs> plain and simple. Cross yeah. that bridge when you get to it. Yeah. But, but to yeah, be able to have sharing, the option. Who's going to share? I mean, it's like sharing a grader or um, You're talking only about the highway department. I'm talking as a whole. So I if thought not, of this was school committee because, yeah. you know, I, one of the ways I thought about it was you have, you know, Waitley and Conway Grammar Schools are very similar in size. They're like five miles apart. Mm -hmm. You know, so at one point, Waitley didn't have a principal. Mm -hmm. We were lending our principal down there to cover, and I'm like, why can't, our principal's been a superintendent. Like, our principal could run those two schools in a minute. And I'm yeah. like, and the principal's your highest salary yeah. in the schools, other than the superintendent, but that split. Yeah, I think the superintendent right? would take on another school at the same salary rate? Right. No, but, <laughs> but, <Come on. laughs> no, but that's where it gets complicated. First of all, nobody wants to share the principal, even though it's very doable. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you could actually save an entire principal's salary, mm -hmm. and even if you have to bump that principal sum, and have assistant principals, you're still going to save money. Is that, a, is that a position that's on, a, on an employment contract? The principal? Mm -hmm. The superintendent. Well, the superintendent yeah, has five is. schools anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's, you yeah. know, that wouldn't be the superintendent, yeah. it would be the principals. But, you know, I tried to get some traction with that, but mm -hmm. because nobody wants to share a principal, you know, it's like they want the principal at their school, not at the other school. Yeah. Um, it sort of fell flat, but that's actually, you know, something that that regionalization of school systems is something well, they're trying to push too. Right. Um, but you know. Yeah, and I'm not talking about regionalizing. I'm just right. talking about being able to reach out to a neighbor and say, hey, you know, it'd be great to have um, whatever we, it be. We only did it once mm -hmm. a long time ago mm -hmm. with a police officer. Yeah. Work 20 hours here and 20 hours in Waitley. Mm -hmm. They split the cost of the health insurance yeah. and however the benefits package work. But we did that for a long time. Yeah. Cooperative. Right. That's what we And it could help on. resource issues right. as well. Especially the police department. Like right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it doesn't only have to do with employees, it could also do with equipment. And I know that gets tricky, <laughs> but <laughs> there's a way of figuring that out. Can't do it. <laughs> well, it's just, I mean, there's, there's, there's logistics. I mean, I, I wouldn't, like, Why it, would it, it seems complicated, yeah. but I don't think it's an insurmount. I mean, I just, I, I agree. I think it's something that it's worth a, a really deep dive into investigating. Right. Yeah. If, it, if it's possible, if it's legal, and what that would yeah. actually look like if we. If yeah, we did the, it. all the implications of our, our post employment benefit obligations, all that has to be looked at the whole mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I know in the service it seems like it could be like, why can't we yeah. do this? But then you get into the nitty gritty. Exactly. Right. So heavily regulated. I, I think this is that. worth a discussion with FERCOG first because I mean yeah. they're trying to do this for certain things and obviously even with the accounting it, it didn't necessarily yeah. pan out, right? I mean well, that was because it worked for us. It worked for us knock on wood, but you yeah. know, for how long? Right. Exactly. And right. you know, it could be three, five years from now we're gonna we're gonna be desperate 
yeah. to try to find and exactly. accountants are there's not a lot of them out there. Yeah, I mean, we can't talk like it's been successful because we haven't really officially started yet. Is, is Mike still is on our payroll officially now? Or it's still no, it starts July first. So it hasn't even happened. Yet. We'll see where it goes. It's no, but I mean, my point was that yeah. even, even FERCOD didn't sustain their a, a mutual accounting right. aid yeah. program. Right. Yeah. Right? Exactly. They, yes. they, they, they wrote it and said, yeah. no, no longer. So that put us in a quandary. Well, luckily, we had a, a fallback position. but For now. For now, right. And that's your point. Yeah. I'll keep okay. down before I forget. Yeah. <laughs> you have to put an extra line on there. Yeah, I think it's there's there's a lot of challenges with, with this. Yeah, not, not it's, that it's impossible. I think it's a good it's, conversation to initiate because it's about identifying the resources. The that can be yep. shared. But I think it's Roy's, Roy's got a really good point. Why, why don't we just merge all the talents together? Well, I didn't say all the talents. <laughs> <laughs> <that's laughs> <that's laughs> like. But also keep in mind, along with the, uh, the the answer, the partial answer is get more young people in town. So you, whatever you do, you can't destroy the things that, why does somebody want to live in a, a town like Conway or Ashfield? Because well, they're school. small towns yeah. with yeah. their quirkiness and they have their own grammar school and everything. So it's, but that's my point, you can't get young people here when they can't afford it. Well, this thing is, it's the chicken and egg and right. it's, there are these outside factors that we have no control over really. So yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> we shouldn't try, but yeah. you know, you said, uh, what you say? Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, yeah, because you just might get it. Yeah, it's the circuit. Yeah, there are these un, un, unforeseen yeah. things that happen. I'm not saying the, here to things hang stagnant <laughs> and, no. and never make. Yes, they do. We did. We did. We did. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not my point. Only one you know, point is, yeah. but it's it's frustrating. Believe yeah. me, we were looking at consolidating the buildings <laughs> of, of the schools yeah. and. You know, the pushback you get from that is like, it's like a tidal wave coming at you. So we lost Zoom, but we're still on FCAT, yeah. so we're still good to go. Okay. There anyway, but so I'll there is a difference between implementing something and just having just the option, just right? Just All I want is the option or see if it's an but, option. But yeah, it's interesting how your small idea oh, sorry. Yeah. Got the snowball into Yes. <laughs> Yeah. 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 But I, well, one thought would be with yeah. all the uh, potentially yeah. synergies yeah. with yeah. towns yeah. would be yeah. but it's, would it increase our possibility of getting like regionalizing for grant applications through state federal governments? Well, that's the problem with the grants that we have right now is the way that they do the formulas, and we've been talking about it with our state reps over and over and over. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. As you know. Yeah. Chapter 90, the way they do it is ridiculous. Yeah, chapter 79. Cha yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, we have no ability to change that aside from continuing to communicate to them this needs to be changed. Yeah. You need to remove the top 1%. Or you need to remove the top 10% of the top 1%. Yeah. Whatever it might be yeah. to help us out. Yeah, the outliers. Right. Um, I, I don't see that changing at least any time soon. So maybe there's something that we can do outside of that to, you know. Well, if you form like, a, if, you, if you do a, like a regional application or something, I mean, that's where, you know, things change. Right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe that's the case, but I don't think, you know, we'd have to be uh, but then you incorporated as a region, the, right? No, there are, yeah. there are a lot of, the state is trying to push regional, every, every cooperation. Yeah. Okay. For instance, like with the uh, CONCOM, Ashfield was the lead on this, and they got a whole bunch of towns together. Con uh, Conway's CONCOM decided at the time that they weren't interested, but they got together, and the towns together are paying for um, not an agent, but a clerk for the conservation commissions because it's really difficult. There's so much work. There's paperwork that needs to be done specifically. Mm -hmm. Notice of it. Um, and so we may be asking next year to join in that, which mm -hmm. we hadn't so far. But it does, it costs a lot of money. And I, there's a lot to, yeah. to look at, but that's money. definitely. You know what would be nice though? If we had somebody whose sole job was grant applications. Well, this is where professional. And how would we do that as just one town? Oh, wait, we could do that as. Well, yeah. You know where those people work? You know where those people work? The Children's Museum. Yeah. The Museum of Fine Art. Well, yeah. well the Fern Pug the does. The Fern Pug is giving us help with grant writing. Because right. I got to tell you, most of the grants that have come through my office, I have gotten phenomenal help with the MVP and all of those things I'm getting right. a lot of help with. Um, so we, we do kind of already have that 
but it does come back down to our EQV, you know, but how we're assessed, our wealth, whether or not we're going to get. Is an assistant to the wealth. highway super a 40 hour a week job? Eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's what I said. I said, see what I'm saying? I think he needs. Yeah. 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 And that's why towns <laughs> like, for example, I was at a meeting with the town finance committee, and, and, the, and the equivalent controller for the town of uh, Long Meadow was there, and just kind of laughed in her face because they employ somebody in the highway department whose sole job it is to fulfill the uh, complete the uh, pavement condition index reports, oh, yeah. which go to the state, and that's why these larger towns get. Uh, they do relative right. to us getting a larger share of state grant money for things like highway infrastructure and supporting and, and ancillary, and ancillary yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. And you have to understand have that. with the pavement management part of it is a lot of them towns are have different pavement than we do. Um, the roads weren't const were constructed way better than ours was. To begin. <laughs> yeah. So then cars to, to do them pavement, oh, I've done a lot of looking into this pavement management stuff, and it's any anybody that understands the construction of the roads can tell you which roads need fixing. I mean, yeah. my what what I'm trying to do in this town is get my pavement so it's something that I can manage. Mm, yeah, um, unfortunately wasn't in very good shape when I first took over and yeah. it's been hard getting it to somewhere where we can do maintenance on it and not a, not rebuild it. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quick question. And you said uh, we can join to the other yeah. towns next year and when is the formal day to join them and then we can start to talk about it. Well that's only for the Conservation Commission and it's oh. through Ashfield so I haven't even really gotten there yet I just it was just speculation that we may okay. consider an example. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so originally when they first put it out for this year um, the Conway Concom said no we, do, we don't want to be a part of it and I, I want to say our share was a phenomenal amount of money so um, but I've been told that they may need it for the next year, potentially. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I'll, ha I'll have to talk to their town administrator and see. And ebbs and flows with how many notices of intent you have each year, right? Because that's the heavy lift for the home it, home. it does, yeah, yeah. And this past year has just been phenomenal for them because of the flooding. I mean, it's just been, you know. You know, highway department, you yeah, put a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, any, right. any other priorities? I'm sorry that that took up so much time. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you do because with you know with the uh, way the state formulas are, I mean, this is uh, something we'll be bumping up ad infinitum. I mean, there's things that fall in our lap every now and then, you know, yeah. conversely or not, you know, like flooding. We got money from the state, we couldn't quite leverage it maybe the way we want, but at least the damage wasn't as extensive. Have to try something. Well, yeah. We, we legally can't like institute our own local tax. Like, Sorry? like legally, like as a town. A tax? Well, yeah, like, no, like, um, like a millionaire's no, tax. No, no. 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 We, have, we have a hotel tax. tax. We have a meals tax. Oh, so we can. And, yeah, and they're talking about what's the uh, the ad uh, the for the real estate? Is that what they're oh, talking about? The transfer? Right. Transfer tax. Transfer tax. With yeah. the MBTA community law. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're, they're yeah. looking at trying to give us more local options. But let's face it, we're just taxing our people a different way. Yeah, we're just paying. So it's not. No, but I'm talking about taxing millionaires. So, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like yeah, the no, problem in so. Vermont yeah. is what, yeah. right? But over 50% of the homes in Vermont are second Absolutely. homes, right? Yeah. right? Exactly. So they're, they've been trying for years well, Cape to pass has a second a, home tax. Cape Cod so does it. Sense. Cape Cod right. has a split rate. Cape Cod has well, something like in the outer part of the Cape, 70% yeah. of the homes are not owned by people whose primary legal residence. Right. So towns have a split rate. Yeah. So they Montague has a split be. rate between commercial. We don't have any kind of commercial in right. Vermont. Yeah. But Vermont does it, and Cape Town do have a, a split rate now between primary and non-primary residents. Yeah. Well, we have so few commercial properties. I mean, we, we yeah. look at this every year, and, yeah. and the amount, like, if we did have a split tax rate for commercial we'll properties, it's not anything. worth they it. They couldn't afford it. They don't want to drive them out. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I don't, I don't know about trying to do one on, on second homes. That'd be interesting to yeah. find out. Yeah. yeah. Or we have 20 second homes here. 
I mean, yeah, but probably big dollar homes. So yeah, yeah, big dollar yeah. homes, exactly, <coughs> exactly. Yeah, the other thing with the Cape is that because of the uh, tremendous growth in housing, and because seventy percent of the people who live there aren't there year round, they don't have people <coughs> who can, or even for that matter, be interested in serving on town committees, let alone volunteer fire and rescue. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the rationale for imposing a split rate because they have to hire the people who can afford to live out there, or even close near there. The cave is beyond absurd yeah. in terms of housing costs. That's why they do it, and that's why we're going to have to start to do that too. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talking about the Airbnb, I was thinking in the overall uh, cap that is going to happen in 2026 mm -hmm. with the uh, United States and Canada and Mexico, I think those three together. And I was thinking that many people travel here but also enjoy places like this because. When I talk to my friends, uh, I live in Congo, everybody said, oh, wow. Um, and also, when I travel, uh, there are a lot of Airbnb uh, places in, things, in towns like this. And I was thinking to also, because my husband is already retired, maybe uh, we have some, I think we have like a, a small house we are not using, but it's not part of the house. Maybe accommodate for Airbnb, but my thought was, what is the taxes here, or what I have to do? But I'm thinking you have to go through Airbnb and the town where yeah. they have to check off on everything and make yeah. sure that board of health. Oh, the yeah. Board of health. Yeah, that's it's the board of health. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. But to like your point. I, I have gone to the planning board asking them to look into ADUs. So the current the current okay. zonings, the current zoning bylaws that we have right now, superficially address ADUs, uh, but not substantively. No, they, they address ADUs as part of the unit, not a detached unit. Oh, that's I my want, point. You're right. Yeah, that's I want ADUs, ADUs as a detached is, yeah, unit. That is my point. Again, yeah. we have a problem here with the elderly and with mm -hmm. retired people yeah. that are in these huge homes with stairs that they can't do anymore, but they have family and they want to bring in, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So be able to build an ADU on that property, yeah. the older couple can live in there and have right. the younger family live in the, the so main the, house. So Los Angeles is way ahead of most other cities and towns with this. So they've mm -hmm. modified their zoning laws where, yeah. you know, if you live in, you know, there, I watched on YouTube some woman who lives, who rents out her parents' house on a quarter of an acre in a very desirable section of Los Angeles, and she lives in a little ADU mm -hmm. that's probably about 600 square feet that's built onto that property. Yeah. But of course, you know, it completely changes the setbacks, and it, it changes, all of, changes all of the zoning. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I think will need to be considered is, I don't know how a butters, like if, if on my house, on Main Poland Road, if I turned my house into um, an Airbnb or put an ADU on my property, my neighbors might not be too happy about that. Yeah. You know, they don't want strangers. You could put a shed there. They don't. Yeah. They might not. Yeah, be but happy somebody's about. not renting it. <laughs> right. Every other week. I mean, week. people rent their homes already, right? I mean, it's already being done. Yeah, there are I, about. I, I, I think that there's some like people four air, take advantage. There's four of Airbnbs ideas. right now. I, I think there's opportunity. I think there's yeah, opportunity here to again. investigate. Right. I mean, changing Definitely. the planning, the zoning bylaws to allow yeah. for this stuff with uh, obviously oversight. Yeah. You know. Well, it, it makes it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, public, public public comment and, and review. Yeah. There's something called naturally occur, naturally occurring retirement communities, and many many towns in the United States are facing this. And most young people can't afford to buy houses anywhere in this mm -hmm. country, really, for that for that matter. And uh, having attended a lot of regional and national conferences, I've been talking to uh, many small towns throughout the United States, including places way up in northern Maine, New Hampshire. Oregon, Washington State, outside of the major Midwest cities, because of remote commuting the, uh, and, and tele telecommuting, the prices of homes in these rural areas that otherwise are economically depressed have gone way up. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's causing a tremendous imbalance between the, housing of, the price of housing and the average median household income They're completely out of whack. California's always been out of whack. I mean, I, yeah. I work with towns in California where 13% of the population is below the poverty line, and the average price of a home 
is seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars know, towards Lake Tahoe and that area. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. So ADUs could be a possibility, but my thought is when it gets down to a lot of these folks who are driving prices up because they're not their primary residences. Mm -hmm. Well, well good idea you also to factor in. in. Yeah. Right. I mean, over the last five years, corporations like Zillow yeah. and Redfin bought up 40% yeah. of the housing oh, yeah. market. Oh, yeah, so private equity is quite right. going I mean, nuts. that's what really drove the cost. Well, I think uh, the Boston Globe just had a, a, a report on um, real estate prices from 2018 to 2023, and I think, like, orange, the, the, the average yeah. cost of a home in, increased, like, like 103% yeah, or something. Yeah, one up by about 75%. Yeah. Yeah, that's because it was very depressed at the beginning of this. <laughs> well, yeah, I did a little bit very depressed. <laughs> well, it still is. <laughs> exactly. So there's lots of room for growth there. And the average household income of Orange and in, in Athol, neighboring Athol, which is a part of a regional planning district, is still among the 10 lowest in the entire Commonwealth. And in places like Adams and North yeah. Adams, the same but, thing. But yeah. on top of that, Chris, you know this real well. You can't build a house for, for less than, what, $600,000 yeah. now? Very hard. Well, it's right. about $350 per square foot. That's what we yeah. pay. That's yeah. what we pay. Yeah. That's yeah. what we pay for yeah. our house, yeah. 350 so, a square yeah. foot. So a 1,000 yeah. square foot house for 350 minimum. Right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that but that's, crazy. that's what it, so you can get the land, but you can't build the house. Right. And then you can't afford the insurance. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, right. Right. Because you're the interest rate's crazy. Well, it all snowballs from there. Yeah, so. it does. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I had right. to be very <laughs> concise. So Chris, yes. and, and personnel committee will yes. look into increasing the town contribution. Yes. Yeah, well, when we did our highway uh, review for the uh, CDL position, non-CDL position, we yeah. were uh, taken back that at, by how many towns are paying 80% of the health insurance premiums. We always thought that we were up there in the leading edge and we're not. It would also be nice to see, like, not only the comparison between the towns, but what the projected actual cost would be, the increase in cost would be at 80, 90, and 100. That's right, I was just gonna ask you what, yeah. I can't so remember what the school 80, contract is. Yeah. It's 70% of the school with the union negotiated. That's a new, that's a new, yeah, yes it is. Yeah. I mean, there was a former select board member who had always complained that it would then all of a sudden lead into the, uh, the school committee and having to negotiate which our contract comes due next year. Yep. That would become a bargaining point for the union that if the town is doing this, the schools have to be in parity and all that kind of thing. So you'd have to look at the whole. Totally. Oh, for sure. You'd have to look into yeah. the whole gambit. Which I think we have to anyway. I mean, right. We, we can't put our heads in the sand. Well, it's the biggest case. workforce, too. In the yeah. Town. Yeah. 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 It is. Mm -hmm. um, it would be a huge bargaining chip. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No. Um, any other discussion on that topic? No, I'm already impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, did We're going to solve these things, Alan. Yeah. Did you want to call it? I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all for Thank joining you. us. Thank Thanks you, you so much. You're set, sir, unless you want to hear nope. the town administrator updates. <laughs> 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 hey, Brandon, it's good. We don't have to. Um, really welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Ron. Good to see you. Good to see you later. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I do all the time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't know. Um, okay, moving this meeting along. Town administrator updates. I really look good. I don't have any questions about it. And you post these online. Unless, yes, too. Yes, unless you so. want to say anything, but I read through it also. But I did too. And I did talk to Tim while I was up there. Yep. Um, no, I, I, pretty, I talked about a lot of this during the meeting, to be honest with you. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Moving along then. Uh, select board mem member comments or concerns. You've got none right now. Yeah, Me either. All right. Nothing on the first day. Uh, no mail. No announcements. Next meeting is July 1st. 6 p.m. As always, um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.